the Academy Awards are fast upon us, having them taking place in the next month. So I just thought that I should bring in what Todd McCarthy of Variety wrote as one of the very best on-screen adaptations of the King seen thus far. That's right, folks. In this one, we are talking Elvis Aaron Presley. What are you talking about? Who's Austin Butler? In what? You mean Elvis like the John Carpenter two-part TV movie? That was Kurt Russell. I can't tell you why you say the things you do. Isn't it obvious? Bubba Hotep. Bubba Hotep was released in 2002 and was written and directed by Don Coscarelli. It was based on the 1994 short story written by Joe R. Lansdale. The film stars Bruce Campbell as a geriatric Elvis Presley. And if that confuses you, well, it's explained in the story that Elvis, after his divorce, he kind of got tired of the fame and he decided to switch places with an Elvis impersonator, and he is the one who died young, and Elvis, who is now living as an Elvis impersonator, went on living and ended up in an old folks home in East Texas. And in this, he has to save his old folks home from a soul-sucking mummy. It is in the combination of the three key creative forces that make this film work. Don Coscarelli, most famously known for his Phantasm series, as well as John Dies at the End, is well-versed in genre fare that has a wacky sense of humor. Joe R. Lansdale is an author who has spanned a multitude of genres from horror to western to southern gothic, and he is known for bringing in pathos to the lesser genres. And of course, Ash Williams himself, Bruce Campbell, who is the king of slapstick and horror films, bringing such an earnest performance in Elvis. So yes, this film is goofy. Not only do we have Elvis as an elderly man, but we also have the late Ossie Davis playing JFK. Interesting to note that Ossie Davis was actually born the same year as JFK, 1939. But even more interesting to note, Ossie Davis is a black man and JFK famously was not. He says that the CIA or LBJ or just they dyed him this color all over. And after that day in Dallas, they had his brain removed and replaced with a bag of sand. It's an inherently off the wall zany premise. But what makes this movie work is taking that gonzo idea and playing it absolutely straight. Blending the three key ideas that this movie touches on. The myth of Elvis, and to a lesser extent, the myth of JFK. An unflinching criticism of how we treat the elderly in our society. And it brings in the theme of legacy. So let's get into the myth of Elvis. Look, I'm a millennial. I have never lived in a time where Elvis Presley is alive. Apparently. But he's such a touchstone to American culture. So much so, you go to Las Vegas and you see Elvis everywhere. His home, Graceland, still is a tourist experience. He was more than a singer. More than an actor. More than a sex symbol. More than a ceremonial DEA agent. He was an icon. Sure, Harry Styles is cool. But do you think they're going to be making movies about him in 50 years? Probably not. And his death at the age of 42. It was such a shock to the American public. 80,000 people attended his funeral at Graceland. And Jimmy Carter, the President of the United States, felt a need to say something. Eulogizing him in a way saying that he permanently changed the face of American popular culture. This man was so iconic that there have been sightings of Elvis being alive as late as 2016, decades after his death. And don't go getting me started on JFK, okay? The myriad of conspiracies about what happened that day in Dallas just makes the pairing of old Elvis and old JFK 
work that much more. The Buddy Geezer Ghostbuster squad of Bruce Campbell and Ozzie Davis is one of the greatest on-screen pairings of all time. And if you don't believe me, just watch how fun it is to see them sneak a baby Ruth as they go over their ancient Egyptian lore on how they can kill the mummy. Even more so, they have a hero walk as they prepare for that final confrontation they have between themselves and Bubba Hotep. And it's a hilariously Herculean feet for them to waddle down the hallway. It's hilarious, but it's played straight, allowing the audience to chuckle at the ridiculousness of what we're seeing, but also get into the emotional headspace that we need to be in the final confrontation. But portraying Elvis, that's a hard ask. A lot of people have tried, and the results are wide-ranging. Sure, his voice is iconic to the point where everyone has their own Elvis impersonation. You don't believe me? Thank you. Thank you very much. See? I can do it. We can all do it. But in a film, an actor can't just be a caricature. They have to embody a human being. And Bruce Campbell in Bubba Hotep? Man, he really does. After two and a half hours every day in old age hair and makeup, he is Elvis. Even when he's inching himself along with his walker, you can tell he still has that swagger that infatuated a nation. But it's more than that. Throughout the film, Campbell monologues as Elvis in prose that is directly ripped out of the short story. And you get this tortured soul that this faded icon has become. He really brings it. And also, just look at the scene when he confronts the mummy. It's funny because it's an obvious bit of physical comedy, but it's also genuine to the character of Elvis, and what we think Elvis would probably be like in his old age. This film would never have worked if the performance was one note and they just made it as broad a comedy as a performance as possible. This had to be genuine, this had to be played straight. And it's fantastic. Another thing that really makes this movie work, like I said earlier, is the unflinching portrayal of life in a poor old folks home. The location of Mud Creek, Texas is a fantastic way of setting up the tone of the entire film. The faded drab paint on the walls helps bring the audience into the room with the characters so that they can kind of even taste the boiled bland food that these old people have to eat and the creaky springs of the bed that they have to sleep on. If you have to imagine one of the worst places to live your final years, this might be it. And then we have the running joke of the two undertakers. They appear throughout the film as the elderly extras depart their mortal coil. And their lack of respect to those who have died, it grows throughout the film. The first time we see them, we have one of the undertakers really trying to pay respects and think about the life they lived and how it feels. Like, they try to feel the loss. And the partner tells him to shut up and just put him in the trunk. The second time we see them, they're more worried about the stench of the body than anything else. And the third time we see them, they trip and spill a corpse at the entrance of the rest home. It's hilarious. But if you really want to see how this film is an indictment on how we treat the elderly, all we need to do is see how the orderlies talk down to the residents, and listen to how Elvis monologues about how he feels about the situation. The character that interacts with Elvis the most, apart from JFK, is the nurse, played by Ella Joyce. And her main job is to, well, there's no easy way to say this, um... She has to apply ointment onto Elvis's nether regions because, as Elvis states, What do I care? I got a growth on my picker. She chides him like a misbehaving child every time he talks back to her. Even when he says some nasty things or cusses at her, she doesn't respect his disrespect. The scene where he sneaks a peek at the daughter of his recently deceased roommate, he says that there was no intention of her bending over and showing him her butt, but there was also no attempt to hide it. She just doesn't care, doesn't see him as sexually threatening, doesn't see him as a sexual being in general. But he's an adult. He's a man. Bedridden and achy, having a growth in a place that no man wants, but a man nonetheless. And it's this frustration of the constant infantilization of him 
with everyone else who's not an elderly person. And the rejuvenation of life in him while he's hunting the mummy that lets him finally tell off the nurse in a way that she feels it. And yes, it's rude. It's mean. It's probably even cruel. But you have to understand that in this moment, it is the first time in a long time that he has felt able to stand up for himself. But what makes this film great is the way it weaves the myth of Elvis with this portrayal of an elderly, broken, on death's door Elvis to create the theme of finding legacy. Legacy is something we probably all think of, like what are we leaving behind? What is our mark on the world? But it's probably a bit more pertinent when you're at death's door. Throughout the film, Elvis talks about his failures as a husband and his failures as a father. Even pondering whether, if his daughter knew that he was alive and in this rest home, would she come to visit or would she even care? No one believes he is who he is. No one comes to see him. No one cares. In the film, the entire first act, Elvis spends his time in his bed. He is just waiting to die, anonymous to the world. It's through the mummy's attacks in the rest home that Elvis gets his mojo back. Part of him wants to run, especially when he comes face to face with the undead creature in the halls. But it's only after seeing a 24-hour Elvis movie marathon on TV where he realizes he needs to secure his legacy. After spending a life pretending to be a hero, playing one in the pictures, being one on stage, he makes the decision to do one heroic act. Because who else is gonna believe him? The only two people who are talking about this mummy or know about it is a black dude who says he's JFK and an old dude who says he's Elvis. He decides to team up with JFK and stand between the residents of the Mud Creek Shady Rest Retirement Home and the unquenchable evil that is trying to suck their souls out of their butts. Did I say this movie was goofy? So Elvis puts on his best jumpsuit, cape and high collar and all, and he does what needs doing. And in the end, all is well. Oh, and one last thing about why this movie is great. What is the best monster to go after an elderly person? A mummy. Because what's older than a guy who was a World War II vet? An undead Egyptian creature thing. They both have like creaky joints who really can't move very fast. It's just great. It's poetic and fun. And I like it. But so yeah, that's Bubba Hotep. Really great stuff. I highly recommend it. Not sure where to find it. You might have to rent it or buy it on VOD. Like, I'd highly recommend it. It is great. It's fun. It's basically 90 minutes. Um, you can't go wrong. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, such and such, etc. And so forth. But I'll be back in a few weeks with my real video that is tied to the Oscars. I do have one coming. I just wanted to watch Bubba Hotep again. So here you go. You're welcome.